So if you click this video, you're probably wondering how to make a ghillie rifle cover. As all snipers know, true ghillie is made, not bought. So today I've got a few basic supplies. You can get all this for under $40 at Michaels and Walmart. And um, I'm gonna teach you how to make a rifle cover for your sniper rifle. So for the first step, we basically just use this dye and it's got some complicated instructions on it, but we're trying to dye the burlap we got so it's not such a bright tan color. We're trying to make it more of that like military green. Um, and we're hoping it comes out uneven. So we kind of folded it up and it's, it's really bundled up in there. Uh, I should have filmed us like putting it in there, but yeah, so burlap's cooking. It's got about 30 more minutes until the color is like put in and then I'll show you guys us rinsing it off. So this just got done boiling and now we're going to try to ladle it out with spoons because we want to save the water in case it's not quite as deep of a green as we want it to be. This is really steamy. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so it turns out burlap makes a lot of steam. So. Now we just have to rinse this out and hope that it becomes the right color. So this is before we rinse it. Um, this is what the burlap looks like right now, but we're about to rinse it with water and we're gonna go from warm water to cold water because that's what the instruction said. And we'll see how it looks then. It'll probably lighten up a good bit. So we're basically just rinsing it now, trying to get any extra dye off. Uh, it really doesn't look like there is any, but just for good practice, we're continuing to rinse it out. Um, just kind of just squeegeeing it and going through the whole thing. We got a really big, I think it was like a hundred feet of very lap or something. So it, it was a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got it out of the dryer and we're trying to unravel it because it got kind of bunched up. The cat is loving it. <laughs> very difficult to do things like this when you have cats. So you want to take your burlap and wrap it taut around this, uh, just the barrel of your gun, and just make sure you get it nice and tight because uh, you don't want it like moving around and swaying. Then we're just going to take a zip tie and we're just going to put it over this part to keep it taut and we're going to do that throughout the barrel of the gun. So we decide instead we do rubber bands uh, mostly because I bought the wrong size zip ties, but also this way we can take it off a lot easier if we want to change it up at all. So again, just make sure to keep it as taunt as you can when you bring it around. Uh, we have like 500 feet of this, so it takes quite a while to throw it back over the other side, but yeah, we'll time lapse it. So at this point, we're going to try to cut these out um, just so we have all our attachment slots open. So I have an X-Acto knife for that. I'm just going to carefully tear at these, make some holes, and free our little attachment points. All right, so we just cut it off here because we need to leave room for the scope when I get that in. Um, we're going to have a whole nother hood thing that goes up over the scope to cover that. So we're just going to rubber band this last one off here, and uh, then we got a mag to dig out. So if you see now we've got all this extra on both sides um, and that's I mean we want to break up the 3D silhouette but what we're going to do about that just to keep it a little cleaner is just take it, bundle it up and put a zip tie through it to keep it nice and taut. So um, now what we're doing we got all our zip ties on it's held together pretty nicely but we've got a lot of extra and I'm going to leave some on because you want the uh, to, it, you want it to break up the 3D image of the gun uh, like the silhouette rather but we're definitely going to clean it up as well as cut these zip ties off. So I might just do another little time lapse for you. So 
So we also have dug out our hop up right here and enough room for it to slide back. Dug out the other attachment point. Another one, plus my mag. Uh, the button to drop my mag is right here, but that being covered is not a big deal. As long as I know it's there, I can just press it and take the mag out. So the next thing we're gonna do is cut random strips out of this material. This was like a dollar at Walmart, but we don't want them to be uniform. We don't want perfect rectangles or anything. And then we're even gonna bunch it up a little bit further, try to get a crazy shape out of it. And we'll get a little crazier. So once you get kind of an interesting shape, we're just gonna take it, slide it underneath one of these um, rubber bands, and you'll see it fluffs out just a little bit. So we're gonna repeat that all over the gun and help build that base more. So we actually changed our mind. Instead of doing it under the rubber bands, we're going to make little loops like this one all over here in order to get the fabric to stay on permanently. So again, for the next step, we're just gonna kind of bunch these up like this, uh, try to get a random shape. We don't really want to have any particular pattern to it. And we're just gonna tighten them in there. We'll cut these off later, but we're gonna rinse and repeat that for all of them. So now we finish this side, we're just gonna go ahead and cut these and flip over into the other side. So this is what it looks like so far. We finished putting on all of the camouflage patches and now we're gonna add some string just to add a little bit of variation in color and add some depth to it. So it's next to impossible we figured out to get this thing to go through this mesh, um, especially like out the other side. So we're having to painstakingly use the backs of these from what we cut off and tape the string to it because the string that we're using is too big for a needle. So we have to tape this to it and kind of create our own needle that's one use and then we have to do it again so this part is taking us forever but it should look good by the end of it i think it'll be worth it um in my opinion it really adds to it having all these strings but it sucks having to do your own makeshift needle out of a zip tie and some tape Okay, so it's the next day now. It took like literally forever. It took all night long to get all those strings through it. Um, but what I went through and did afterwards, so this is what it looks like after all the strings are in it. it just helps break up that body a little more. Um, but I went through and I took all the solid strings, or at least a lot of them. And if you look closely, just kind of frailed at the edges and I ripped them all apart to turn one string into many, many more strings just to help further break it up. So at this stage, your rifle pretty much just looks like this. Looks kind of like a big bush, but not exactly perfect just yet. So this is just a bunch of fake foliage. We tried to get as little reflection as possible because anything that's reflective is going to shine and glint in the sun, uh, help give you away. And plants really aren't that reflective unless they're wet. So it's just a bunch of plastic fake plants that we got from Michaels and uh, probably won't use all of these, but we're going to start working that into the mesh as well. So we're going to do the same thing we did to be able to put this on. We're just going to feed these through make little loops, put those in a bunch of places, and later on we're gonna figure out exactly what should go where, pop it in and tighten it down. Okay, so we've got a bunch of these loops in here now, and I've left room in case we wanna go back and add more, but it's easier to put them on than take them off. So we're just gonna start picking out foliage and kind of lining it up, making it look how we want to, and then basically see how it looks before we tighten everything down forever. So I think this is the arrangement we're settling on for this side. So I'm just gonna start tightening these down. Uh, we'll snip off all the little tails coming off of them later, but tighten it all down, make them stay, and uh, rinse and repeat that on the top, bottom, and the other side. So this is the final product. Again, we just did the uh, front barrel cover. The scope cover is gonna have to come at a later date but we're actually planning on leaving the back of this gun towards the stock blank because my ghillie in my arm is gonna cover that. So um, there's no real reason to have that. I did plane it in different shades of green. If you see up close, it kind of breaks the hard angles again. But 
for the most part, this is the final product. So this is the shadow that the gun makes. And again, the biggest reason that you do 3D camouflage in the first place is to break up the silhouette of the gun so it doesn't look like one from far away. So that to me does not really look like a gun in the shadow and it looks pretty naturey. It'll blend in well in different environments before we add real foliage. I think that's mission accomplished. All right guys, so this is pretty much how it turned out. I'm super happy with the way it looks. Um, but I did find out something bad through the course of making this project, and that is almost nobody gets to be a sniper at Milson West, which is the event that I was really looking forward to going to. And furthermore, if you are a sniper at Milson West, you're more of a utility than a uh, sharpshooting kill tool, which is fine. It makes a lot of sense, but um, means I'm going to need a new gun. So look forward to more tutorials on customizing guns and... Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Thank you so much.